Hello, and welcome to DB Hoover's Audience Builder, where you can discover insights about your customers and top prospects, use those insights to target and acquire net new accounts and contacts for those accounts, and engage those accounts and contacts directly through integration through your marketing automation systems like HubSpot and Marketo. Now, today we're going to be taking just a brief look at Hoover's Audience Builder. And we'll start where you might start, which is uploading the information about your companies or accounts that you already have or the contacts that you already have. And to do that, you'd simply go here from our dashboard. Now, there's a lot more going on in here. And part of today's demo is we're just going to be seeing a slice of this. So we'll come back to some of these other features in a moment. If we go to upload a list, Hoover's Audience Builder has a simple self-service process where you can start by selecting a file and go through a simple five-step process to load in any data, including data that you haven't had matched yet. Now, I've already done that, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to come out here to where I previously loaded, and this is what you'd see when you were done loading your file. This happens to be a file of our top customers. We're looking to find more accounts like these and also populate them with contacts for our next campaign. So now I'm going to hit Browse to take a look in Audience Builder at what we got by loading in those top customer accounts. This will launch us in to the Audience Builder browse screen. We can see here at the top our count of unique companies. Uh, this is by Dunn's number using the uh, DND data cloud. And we've auto appended or populated for each of these 2,200 companies all of the DD data that you could want. And we've just got a slice of it here. You can fully customize this view with whatever information you'd like, industry, uh, family tree information, and so on. Okay. There are across the top here a number of different other ways to view this data, not simply browsing the data that we got from loading the file. And over here on the left is our search interface where you can enter in any, any type of search that you might want to use to find additional uh, accounts or to sub-segment this list. Maybe you don't want all of these together uh, in, your, uh, in your process. Well, first, what we're going to do, rather than guess what we think might be critical about our top accounts, we're going to actually use these views to discover that information. We're going to have data, uh, we're going to have the data in the DNB data cloud tell us what these accounts are. So let's take a look at location. And we'll just click that. And it's going to tell us right off that all of our accounts that we loaded are in one country, the United States, which we can then click into. And if we want, we can have a regional view of what, uh, of what these uh, accounts, uh, where they are regionally. And if we were going to do a regional campaign, perhaps we would focus on these. We could select our top uh, states down here. We could get a, a simple breakout um, in a bar chart mode below if we wanted. But in this case, we'll just move on. We just want to give you a, uh, an idea of what it, of what it could be uh, to use these types of discovery. Um, we could do the same thing with industry or revenue, different types of different uh, charts for these different attributes. But what I'd like to do is show you something called ideal customer profile. So I'm going to click that. And where each of these other charts uh, are going to pick a specific attribute and give you a deep dive, like we just saw here with location, first by world and then by state, and you could actually keep drilling into look at city. The ideal customer profile takes a broad and horizontal view across all of the um, accounts that you loaded. And it's going to give you the top attributes across a whole bunch of different dimensions, possibly ones that you would not have thought to look for. So maybe you knew to look by location or industry or size, um, but you didn't know some of the other DNB data cloud fields, like decision headquarters, for example. Not all companies are the same. Some are branch locations or subsidiaries. Some subsidiaries have buying uh, center authority, some do not. And decision headquarters is something that allows you to um, isolate those. Uh, DNB identifies to our advanced insights, those that do, in fact, have buying center authority. And if you wanted to, you can now, you'll notice on these um, charts, the ability to actually select certain properties that you care about more than others. And you could actually select that and say, I really want to not just look at the uh, 2,000 companies I loaded, but look at the 1,900 of them, the 85% of them that were decision headquarter. 
and maybe also look only at uh, parents and subsidiaries. And I could check that off and apply that. And again, through this automated discovery, I can push that criteria over into my search. Again, I could have put this here to start with had I known, but by discovering it using the data I loaded, I'm now able to make better decisions about who to target next. Now, in addition to simply analyzing or looking at what you already knew, but with more insight and information, all of these charts also come with a mode where you can toggle uh, from this blue color indicating the data that you've loaded to the view of the DNB data that's available, what we sometimes call lookalikes. And by toggling uh, the ideal customer to lookalike mode, I can see how many more companies there are in the DNB universe that meet the same criteria that I've been selecting uh, as my top customers. So there's this many more decision headquarters and parents or subsidiaries in different industries and so on. Now that's still a lot, so I probably want to continue refining this. I've, I've discovered a couple of key attributes. Now let's take a look at how we can uh, build our own views that correspond to how our business uh, operates. To do that, I'm gonna click on the custom tab. And here you get to build your own charts. And all of these also will have those same two modes where you can look at the data you have or you can look at the DMB data you don't have. One of the most uh, useful charts for doing this type of sizing and analysis is called a cross tab. So let's select that. And in a cross tab, you get to pick two different dimensions, one for your columns. In this case, I'm going to pick company size, and then I'm gonna pick revenue. And here, I know the way my business is organized. I have three main uh, uh, sales teams, one that can sell up to 50 million or under, that's our small business team. And then we have a mid-market team that goes from 50 million uh, all the way up to a billion. And then we have our strategic accounts for, uh, or strategic sales team, I should say, for our largest accounts that are a billion and up in revenue. And then the next dimension I want to look at is industry. And I want to get, uh, in this case, a breakdown, and we can pick lots of different ones. I'm going to pick the next 2017. And to start, since I'm not really sure, I'm going to, uh, you know, what the industry breakout's going to be, I'm going to pick just the two digit value. But as you can see, I could have picked anything there. And now I'm going to apply that and you can see right away, again, we're doing this analysis on these now 1,900 companies that are decision headquarters and only parents and subsidiaries. But I can see there's a, a, a real cluster here around finance and insurance and professional and scientific and specifically mid-market. But I don't just end here. Remember, we said we can always toggle these uh, charts to the broader DMV universe and see where are their lookalikes accounts. So for example, for professional and scientific, which was one of my top two, um, I can see that there's an, an additional 800 accounts that I uh, that are of interest to me, um, particularly for my strategic team that's uh, looking at over a billion revenue. At any point, if I actually want to acquire any of these as net new accounts, anywhere I see these little icons, I can simply click in here and this will bring up the account, uh, or in this case, company acquisition, and I could directly uh, import these. I don't have to go prepare a separate file and do anything else. I can directly bring them in and merge them in with the file of companies that I load, and you'll be able to split them out later. Um, further, I can preview. So if I'm not still not sure, maybe 800 is still too many, um, I can pull up a preview of individual ones and even drill down through this link into individual um, accounts. And you can see here, I've got some in China. Maybe I really wanted to do US only. I could have added that and I could refine my search here uh, or close and move on to get just those accounts. So this all is good so far and hopefully gives you an idea. But a lot of this is just basic firmographics, size and industry and, and other types of properties that we've identified. Wouldn't it be nice if you could also look at the accounts that are in here that actually seem to have an interest in your business. Well, we've got that too. Hoover's Audience Builder comes with multiple uh, modules for looking at just those accounts that are interested in you. And I'm going to take a look at just one of them today called Buyer Intent. So I'm going to click that up here. And what Buyer Intent uh, provides is, again, a, a predefined view that uh, will show you not simply the accounts that you've uh, are focused on, but it'll show you those accounts 
cross compared with those that are showing interest through their search traffic uh, in the products or in the models, as we call them, that you have defined. So you get to define all of these different types of models. Again, these are sample models for our demo site. Uh, you would define these based on the keywords that uh, are of interest to your company, to the kinds of things that you sell. And what this is telling you is that these companies are the ones that have an interest in some of the products that uh, that you sell. And you get additional breakdowns of who these are. So these are just the companies showing intent, not simply companies that meet this criteria. And if you wanted, you can actually add that to your criteria, just like we've added other things to the criteria, and then come back up and uh, take a, a second look at that uh, at that revenue picture again just by creating that or i think i saved one earlier with slightly different revenue bands so i can pull that up here with a more finer grained revenue band and uh, immediately see not just uh where are there uh companies of interest but also specifically the ones that uh, have uh, shown some intent and you can see here i've got slightly different bands and, and ratings so now i can really narrow in on uh, on the accounts that are of interest to me Okay, so that's enough with accounts. Let's move into contacts. And to do that, we can go straight over to our contacts tab here. Now, in the interest of time, uh, I, we didn't preload contacts from a file. I went ahead and got some in so that you'd have something to look at here because the basic idea with contacts is very similar to what's available for uh, companies. You can load in your own or you can acquire net new from DNB. So we got a little bit of mix of both that I put in here uh, before recording this so you could see. And the same idea as you had with companies, you've got data from the DNB data cloud populating for these contacts. So things like their title, level, email, phone, and sometimes direct phone, if we have that uh, for any of the contacts that might be in here. The process for acquiring net new contacts is basically the same as we just saw with companies. You can browse what you've already got. You can then use that to discover contacts that you don't have and then acquire them and bring them in and activate them. So let's take a quick look, for example, if I look at available contacts for these companies and I'm, let's say I want to discover the contacts I already have. Okay, I can see where they are by level here, but then like in all of the other graphs, there's always this uh, color-coded green tab or link that allows you to look at all the possible available contacts in the DnB universe. Now, one difference with contacts than with companies is we're always taking account of which companies you're targeting. So you would all this work to target a specific set of companies. We want to make sure you're getting contacts just for those companies. And so, and so that's what these contacts are showing here. Now, if we want to build our own graphs, we can do that as well. I've already built one here. And in this case, I'll take a look at how these available contacts break out for these companies based on a combination of their level and their functional group. So again, we were maybe looking at that uh, professional services um, uh, in industry segment earlier when we were looking at who were showing the most intent. Well, here, sure enough, we can now focus on engineering and development, maybe within those professional uh, uh, services companies, and maybe just specifically look for vice presidents and directors. And once again, if we want these contacts, we could get them directly here uh, just by clicking that, and that would bring open the uh, contact acquisition dialog uh, so that we can bring those uh, directly here into our audience builder site. Now with contacts, you have some additional features. Uh, you can limit the number of contacts per company when you bring them in. You can also see the company coverage of how many uh, unique companies these contacts are associated with, as well as get a contact preview. Now, what I haven't shown, because it's basically the same as what we've seen already, is you can, of course, add your own criteria anywhere in here. You don't have to just stay with what's in the chart. So if you want a specific job title, maybe you don't want just engineering, you want the word research to be in the job title, you could do that. You could look for uh, those with email or with a certain email uh, quality uh, that's available uh, to augment what, uh, what contacts you're interested in acquiring. And furthermore, beyond even uh, the other attributes I've shown, there's hundreds more uh, insights and other information that might be available to either refine your accounts or, uh, or the contacts. Okay. 
Well, in this case, I'm going to pretend that these contacts that are already here are the ones that we wanted to acquire. It'll just save us some time of, uh, of bringing these directly in here in the middle of the demo. So let me open up a segment that I had uh, from earlier where I had acquired these contacts already. And we'll talk about the last part of this process, which is activating or engaging with the uh, companies and contacts that we've acquired. Okay, so here earlier is what I actually brought in um, against that segment that we were working on. It's a smaller number of contacts, uh, just eight to, to be enough of a sample uh, so that you can get the idea just from a few sample companies in those segments. And really the last part of this process couldn't be easier. When you've acquired the contacts that you wanted uh, that correspond to the criteria that you have, to activate these, uh, you simply go up here to the send feature and select send, and we have connectors to the different uh, marketing automation system that you want. So in this case, let's send to Marketo. And I could uh, select that here, and it's going to offer to let me uh, pick a list, or, uh, or I can uh, uh, also create my own new list. Uh, when I'm sending these, it's gonna tell me that I'm sending eight different contacts, and I can even schedule this uh, to run every week. Maybe I every week want to come in and uh, uh, refine some additional contacts and so on. Now, I sent this earlier as well. So we're again going to pretend like I hit send and instead take a look at what was sent before by going over to the segments page. So here's that segment that I was working on, uh, top contacts to send. And you can see here, these are the eight contacts that were sent uh, to Marketo in that one-time export, which could have been uh, scheduled. So this really takes us full circle. So I'll come back now to our Hoover's Audience Builder dashboard. And just review, what we started with was our own list of top accounts that we thought was interesting that might make for a basis on which to target some additional accounts and contacts. We use the insights, first just the basic firmographic discovery. Where are these uh, companies? What size are they? Do they? How do they fit into the way we sell? We were able to then um, look at expanding that to net new prospect accounts, populating then also net new contacts. Along the way, we took a look at just one of the insight uh, modules that come with Audience Builder, which is buyer intent. So we could focus on just those accounts that actually seem to care about what we sell. And then we went ahead and sent that, or I should say acquired the contacts and then sent them on uh, to Marketo for engagement. And if we were to come back here, we could see some, some of this other information now starting to become more relevant. We can see if there are additional uh, intent accounts that are popping up through that intent feed. We can see if any of the existing uh, uh, accounts or contacts that we've already sent have been changed. And of course, there's more ways to dive in here. But for day that, to, today, that's where we're going to end this uh, demo of Hoover's Audience Builder. Uh, hopefully, you have a, a good high-level understanding of just how easy it is to move through this process of discovery, uh, targeting, and engagement. Thank you.